Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with a flip through of a finished swatch book in this Pentallic field book, watercolor notebook. And this is the notebook that I have been doing um, various swatches of various media in. And since I have finished the entire book, I wanted to do a flip through today. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is gonna be a kind of random uh, supplies. It'll be all kinds of different media. And some were, some might have been sketches, but I can't even remember because it's been a little while since I've looked through it. So this first one was the Daniel Smith Mineral Marvels dot cards. And this was really fun because I got to see, you know, all, all of the different um, gen, genuine, <laughs> you know, go Google, <laughs> Google for more info on the genuine scandal. But uh, I'm not going to comment on it today. But you get to see, you know, the majority or, or at least a lot of the uh, genuine pigments, which is kind of fun. Uh, I definitely have a few favorites in here. I really like the Pimentite Genuine, the Sodalite Genuine, um, Green Appetite. Uh, those are probably the three biggest ones. I, I do also like the Rhodonite but these were not super saturated swatches, but I thought it gave a pretty good impression of what they would look like right out of the, right out of the box. Okay. And then this one was uh, the Daniel Smith confetti dot cards. I didn't label any of the colors and I didn't go back to label them later, but basically um, these are little foursomes of color that are supposed to work well together and you could do fun things and I mixed some here and then this was my uh, Roman Schmall watercolor haul from November of last year and uh, then there was also a Shinhan purple gray that I added to the order this has not faded this is uh, essentially a fugitive color but since it's been in the sketchbook for over a year it doesn't seem to have faded so it only fades when exposed to light and got some really good colors and I've been using a lot of these and I'm I'm really really loving this shadow violet light it really gives some really nice effects I like this actually better than um Daniel Smith's oh what what is it called uh moonlight <laughs> I'm having a problem remembering it, but uh, but I actually like this one better than Daniel Smith's version, and I've been using it a lot. Um, this Indian Red, I really, really like a lot as well. Um, the Potter's Pink, I have so many Potter's Pinks, so I haven't really had a chance to use this one all that much. Um, and of course, all these blues are really great. The other one that I don't really use much that I thought I would use more is this Aquarius Orange. It's just kind of sat in a palette, and I haven't really used it much. All right, and these were a Black Friday haul from last year from Jasper Stardust. Um, I'm probably not going to be buying anything from Jasper Stardust uh, this year, or you know, I've already I purchased a couple of colors, but I, I'm pretty much done with my collection there. Um, these are these have actually been really nice favorites in here. Include this cobalt teal, uh, the Goblin. This one I, I really really love. Um, and the Sour Violet, but they've all been really nice. This is the only one of these that seems a little gritty and maybe hard to deal with. Um, and these are all very nice and I, I really like having all those turquoises. This one I'm gonna go by pretty quickly because these were Faber-Castell pit brush pens. I didn't label the colors, so it's not all that useful to you now. Um, this one uh, was were two add-ons here. This is Holbein's Shell Pink, which is my favorite shell pink for sure. And then this is Holbein's Gouache Brilliant Gold. Very nice, but some of the metallic does come off a little bit. It's not too bad. And okay, so this, this onto this page, so I'll kind of like go back and forth, was my main watercolor palette as of uh, September of 2020. So, or I'm sorry, uh, December of 2020. And it hasn't changed all that much. I think I've swapped out maybe a couple of colors, but this is a really great palette with, and it's a big palette, so it has a lot of great colors there. And these were some neutral mixes made with these colors. This one's kind of cool, but although I didn't mark what the mixes were, 
I need to be doing some more um, mixing exercises just because I haven't done that in a while and it'd be kind of nice to get back to that. All right, so this, and I think this goes on to the next page. Yes, so these are the Kuretake set of 36 colors and that is continued on to this page. And then this was the 12 color add-on to make it the full 48 color set. I really, really love these. Funny enough, I don't use them very often. I, I wish I did. I, I should go and use them more. I just have so much, so many watercolors that I don't necessarily get to all of them, but they have really great colors. And then this one was just sort of some uh, random stuff. And this was a little test with the, the fountain pen ink Kyo no Oto Kokiero with a dip pen. It's a really great ink. Um, I don't think it's water resistant though. Um, let me, I have some water here. Let me get my brush. I'm pretty sure that's a water soluble ink, um, but I just want to test it. And yeah, that's definitely a water soluble ink. So um, don't use that for watercolor sketching. I just wanted to make sure that I checked that so that um, no one gets the impression that that is actually a permanent ink. Uh, so these were just some some smaller, this was a small haul from Jackson's, I believe, where I uh, did the Schmincke Tundra Orange, which is really beautiful. This is a Roman Schmal Aquarius Brown, Roman Schmal Aquarius Gray. I actually use this one, this Aquarius Gray, quite often. Um, this is the Forest Gray. I only got two colors, and then I ended up getting the small tubes of the complete sets, which I think are later on. This is Dale or Rowney Mars Violet, which was pretty much a dud, all <laughs> a dud, like a total dud, because um, it's just, it had way too much um, binder in it, and it just ended up looking really shiny, and I just did not like that at all. Okay, let me... Of course, there goes my brush. I just want to make sure that I don't leave that sopping wet. Let me grab my brush that just flew across the floor. Okay, let's keep going. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I'm starting on this page. So this was what I just showed you, the extension of that 36 uh, and 12 palette for uh, Kuretake. And this was just some extra color that um, when I was doing some swatching on, I don't remember what I was doing, but I these were mostly some of the Schmincke uh, highly granulating colors and some of this, there's still like some thick paint. I basically got it off on here so that I could be sure to save it. Um, and I do that sometimes. I don't, I didn't do that too often in this sketchbook, but that was what that is. And then this is the Holbein 48 color watercolor set. It's continued over here, which I'll show you in a minute. So there you go. You have a pretty good range there as well. But again, I just don't use these very much. Um, so here are the metallics and then ivory black and Payne's gray. They have a really good Payne's gray. Um, their indigo is pretty good as well. And I cannot remember what colors these were. I think this was me demonstrating how to do a, um, dual primary set and what colors to include in that. So, um, but I cannot remember the brands, but I think that was in my beginner watercolor um, video. Okay, so here are a couple more um, swatchings. So this, uh, this was just the couple of colors that I got from Jasper Stardust, oh, these two. So the Aurelin and the Fuchsia, and then this is Blick Cobalt turquoise that's this is actually a beautiful cobalt turquoise and this is daniel smith's prussian blue and then this was from actually a prior swatching of schmincke liquid charcoal made with peach pits i believe hmm, i wonder if that's actually the cherry pit but i can't remember but it, but it's it's a very nice um liquid charcoal it does rub off just a tiny bit but nowhere near as much as regular charcoal would and then here we have some Daniel Smith and, well, mostly Schmanka. There's one Daniel Smith with this McCracken black here. And then we have the Schmanka Ocean Gray, which is a limited edition, really beautiful sort of dark teal. This was just sort of some color play with those colors. And then the this is the entire Tundra collection here. And this is the entire Forest collection here. So we have orange, pink, violet, blue, and green. 
And then here in forest, we have olive, green, blue, brown, and gray. But these are mostly, these are mostly green of, ver of various varieties, but um, they're quite nice. I actually just got the Haze set, which is the newest set. I just wonder if they're gonna keep releasing these sets. Um, I just got the small tubes again, um, and I will be swatching those on the channel soon. Okay, these were the Schmincke Academy watercolors, which are the student grade watercolors. And now that, that everything is, you know, long, long since dried, you can really tell that there's a lot of back runs in these or cauliflowering, um, which where the water just kind of pushes back into the pigment. There's a little bit of streaking on these. So you can definitely tell that they're a little bit lower quality than the professional artist grade Schmincke watercolors. Um, what, are, what are they called? Uh, Horadam. The Horadam watercolors. That's what the professional ones are called. Um, but these are still these are still pretty good, I think. I have since given these to my nephew. And then here was uh, a couple of handmade watercolor makers. Here, this was from the Art of Soil. Um, I haven't been using these a lot. Uh, the hematite is very nice, though. Um, I and I haven't gotten more since then. And then this is the beam gouache, which is quite nice. And again, haven't used that much, so I can't really comment on it. And then these were the Renaissance watercolors. Uh, these are great. Um, again, my only complaint with the Renaissance watercolors is that they can dry a little bit uh, glossy, but, uh, but they have beautiful colors, beautiful color range, and a lot of pigment. And then let's see. Oh, so this was the palette that I had set up in my art toolkit folio palette, the larger palette. Um, and these were some mixes I could get out of those. I did some of the um, highly granulated tundra series, a couple of forest colors, and some basics there. But this this was a really nice setup there. And then here we have some Molotol a cricket uh, a cricket <laughs> Molotol acrylic markers. These are still a favorite. I've been using these a lot and I really really like them. They're very opaque. Uh, they uh, they I was gonna say they re-wet. Well if they don't go dry very often. Sometimes with even with Posca markers I have to charge them by like pressing it down. Uh, pressing the tip down quite a bit, but these these work really really well. They they definitely have replaced um, the other markers as my favorite acrylic markers. Replace the Posca markers, that is. All right, and this was I believe a um, uh, Jackson's watercolor uh, watercolor. <laughs> my words are totally mixed up today. This was an art supply haul from Jackson's. I had a few uh, Albrechter watercolor markers, um, and I've since learned that these watercolor markers are pigment-based as opposed to dye-based, so they should be somewhat light fast. Um, and then this is the Eco line in Burt Sienna, which is a liquid watercolor, which is dye-based, so that's not going to be as light fast there. And then these are all the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 Aquarelles. Um, these are always a favorite. Love these a whole lot. Um, and then this was just one Holbein Artist Color Pencil in Burgundy. You're always going to be getting the a little bit of texture from media that shows texture here because um, it's uh, cold press watercolor paper here. Okay, and so these were some more Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor markers that I got. Um, these colors didn't seem as saturated as the two I had got, or the three that I had gotten before, um, but they're still really, really nice colors. And again, these are um, pigment-based, not dye-based, so they, they should be somewhat light fast. And then this is more of the liquid watercolor from Ecoline. This is, uh, this is a pretty good color selection. And the gold is super thick. I've, I've done a couple of spreads in my uh, sketchbook with the Eco line, and it's really nice. And sketchbooks are what I would recommend it for. And actually this is, 
before I move on to that one. This is more Ecoline liquid watercolor. This is sort of the basic colors that I got first, but I swatched second. Um, and this is these are the ones that are in the liquid form. And as you can see, they're really vibrant and bright. And then this was another Jackson's haul. These are Sennelier watercolor brush markers. Since this, uh, what I would consider kind of poor performance, <laughs> at least on this watercolor paper, I have not used uh, these watercolor markers from Sennelier since swatching. Um, you know, I, I, I do need to try it on a different surface to see whether it has some of the same issues. And basically my issues were kind of it, it um it went down kind of dry here you could you could totally see the pigment underneath it didn't wet very well um, and it left this sort of textured where the texture of the paper looks darker so i wasn't a big fan of that and here i had a pick pit brush pen in chrome green these are always a favorite i love those in mixed media same with neo color too this is um the FW acrylic ink in antelope brown and then this was a large soft pastel and then these are the eco line brush pens uh, which are also dye based so basically it's just those liquid watercolors in a marker and that was my swatching for these and then here are the Windsor and Newton watercolor markers and these you, you can see a bit of streaking from where I'd, I marked underneath before wetting. Um, these I thought had the best colors of all the different watercolor markers. And again, these are pigment based rather than dye based like the Eco line. So uh, they should be a little bit more light fast as well. And then here we go here with a mixed media uh, unboxing from Jackson's. So these are all, oh, oh, and this was an additional thing here. So, the, so these were all um, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel pencils um, in all these neutral colors, a couple of Molotol acrylic markers in a, in a variety of colors, this liquid chrome marker, which I haven't used in mixed media, but would like to. Um, this was a Schmincke soft pastel, a couple of uh, golden open. These are love these that's all i gotta say i haven't used this amsterdam paints gray for anything and then the uh golden so flat which is so flat i i can attest to that um and then these were letter sparrow brand watercolor tubes um this is a handmade watercolor company i don't know if i i don't think i swatch oh right because i swatched these here the, these are the these are the swatches of the letter sparrow tubes here in fuller um, fuller swatches here. And there's been a little bit of the pit pastel that, that's come off. That's one of the problems with using pastel. Unless you use a fixative on it, uh, it'll most likely rub off to the next page. So these were the Letter Sparrow colors, Prussian blue, violet ochre, orange, iron oxide, saffron, saffron and earth patina. Uh, this violet ochre continues to be my favorite of these. It's a really pretty color. And I don't think you really could see that color very well in my original swatching video just because um, my lighting was a little weird in that one. Okay, and these are all blocks watercolor um, from, from the uh, dot card that I got from St. Louis Art Supply. So this was the entire range that they had in, in that dot card. Okay. And I haven't decided to get more of these. I just kind of left it with the dot card for now. Um, their Indian yellow is very nice, but at this point I have a pretty good selection of Indian yellows. Uh, I kind of have to think about it. Quite frankly, you know, I have so many good brands of watercolor, like Schmincke and Daniel Smith are, are some of my favorites. So um, with those, I don't feel like there's really anything I can't get better or equivalent in another brand. Okay, and this is a video you should have seen recently. This is uh, my Ken Bromley Black Friday haul from this year, where I went through some Windsor Newton gouache, uh, some Rembrandt watercolor pans that I got for a steal. They were like less than a dollar a piece. And then a couple of Ken Bromley uh, brand watercolor tubes. And then these are from the handmade, these are more watercolors from the handmade 
company Ocean Paper. And actually, since the swatching, I have um, purchased a couple of extra colors, stone ochre and glass, and I swatched them under here. And this is a really great set. I really like how they're sort of muted colors and it's they're just really nice watercolors. They do have a bit of a different texture than a lot of other watercolors, by the way. They have a little bit more, not necessarily a grit, but they're definitely a more matte texture and they feel a little more creamy than other watercolors. Okay, and then here is the last page, which were these um, deep, deep light watercolors. I love these so much. I have since purchased another set that has yet to arrive um, just because these are so gorgeous. <laughs> and actually, I didn't remember this when I did the swatching video, but apparently this set that had the Juniper Shadow and the J Blue in it were supposed to, ha the J Blue was actually supposed to be a pink color. Um, so I actually have that coming in the new set <laughs> that I ordered, but I love this J Blue so much that I think it's kind of a happy accident because um, that's actually my favorite of the three of these, but they're also gorgeous. It was funny because when I ordered my new set, they actually emailed me and said, uh, you already have this pink color in the last set <laughs> you purchased from us, which is very nice of them to reach out and do that. Um, but I had to write back and say, actually, you gave me the wrong color originally, but I didn't say anything because I liked it. And anyway, they, they thought that was kind of funny. Let me apologize for getting the color wrong. Um, and I mentioned in this video that this company is in the UK and they're actually not. They're elsewhere in Europe and I, I cannot remember where, uh, but they're not a UK company. So I misspoke when I said that in that swatching video. And then here are the sample colors they sent. This Potter's Pink, Golden Gold Ochre, and Silver Tough. All right, so that's the end of that swatch book. It actually had a few pages torn out um, to do various things with it at certain points. So um, so the next one I have, if I don't do that, it'll end up being a little bit longer than that one. But I will be starting a fresh book, same Pentallic field book. I kind of stocked up the last time I saw them on sale. So um, I'll be swatching again on that for my next swatching series or my next swatching video. All right, well, thanks for hanging in. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. In the meantime, uh, I, well, I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.